last summer I uh, I washed dishes just to make some extra money during the summer. So you wash dishes in the year that you became world champion. Yeah, that's right. Is that how it works in the U.S. with speed skating? Yeah, with uh, with speed skating in the U.S., we don't have a whole ton of money, so we have to do a lot of side jobs and, uh, and make kind of make our own money and our own living. Okay. Hello, sir. We have an old employee of the restaurant here. Are we? There's an old employee of the restaurant. Oh, and well, what's up? What's you're making a story or a Yeah, yeah, a story. For what? Uh, for speed skiing. I just made the Olympic team. Oh, well, did you? And yet, in, uh, we had uh, last, not this previous summer, but the summer before this one. You worked I, here I worked here, yeah, right. um, with uh, Justin, one yes. of the sous chefs. Sure, sure. Oh. Yeah, he was my neighbor. Well, congratulations. Uh huh, thank you. Yeah. In the 1500, I'm like 15th in the. Uh, Cutting a thousand, I'm like tenth right now. Oh. So actually, last then uh, in March, I was uh, I mean, not not to brag about myself, but I was the world champion in the thousand meters. Wow. So pretty strange, huh? Mm hmm. So this is it, Trevor. Yeah, this is it. What's your spot? My spot was uh, right here, just uh, with the main dishwashers, washing dishes. So we get the pile of dishes all right here, and then we each, uh, run them through uh, the main dishwasher here, then we pop them out on this side, dry them off, and then put them on the racks. Does it ever make you jealous if you hear stories about Holland and how people get paid over there and you have to do stuff like this? Um, I guess... Uh, I guess sometimes, you know, like I mean, I mean, heck, everybody wishes they can make a little bit of, little, little bit more money than they always are. But at the same time, I think doing something like this kind of helps you value money a little bit more and and helps you not to become like too greedy or or too materialistic. Could you see yourself going back here? I can see myself coming back to something like this, just because uh, it's you know it's simple, it's not that complicated, and it'll just keep me humble and, and grounded. And did you really choose this year not to do it because it's an Olympic season? Yeah, this year I chose to not do it just because it's Olympic season. I wanted to make sure I had all the energy I could and just focus it towards beat skating. And I get the yeah, just between uh, just sponsor stuff and just from money I made last year, I'm able to stay afloat this year and uh, make enough money to where I don't have to work. But next year I'll, I'll probably start working again. An Olympic champion behind the dishwasher. If I become Olympic champion, I um, mean a lot of things could change. I mean a lot of things will change actually. You know, just between, uh, I mean, just from things I've heard. You know, you get a lot more money, you get a lot more media. So, uh, so I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of things will change. But I think I'll always want to come back to something like this, just because it's simple and it's, it's where I come from. Het seizoen gaat verder in Noord-Amerika met wereldbekers in Calgary en Salt Lake City. Eerst die van Calgary. Marcicano vertoont de eerste tekenen van herstel en wordt zevende op de duizend meter. Marcicano heeft nog een eindschot. Ja, dat is een goede slotronde van Marcicano. Kijk toch eens. En hiermee geeft hij toch aan dat als er sprake zou zijn geweest van overtreedheid, dat dat verleden tijd is. Marcicano zie je wat beter worden, maar is nog niet de Marcicano van vorig seizoen. Hij is op de weg terug. Misschien is het wel een stevig fundament voor deel 2 van dit seizoen. I see myself improving a little bit every single weekend. So I guess, like to the naked eye, it, it doesn't really look like anything. But but to people who are like working with me, that there is definitely a steady progress, and uh, and I'm definitely not hitting the panic button yet, just because we still got what month and a half before the Olympics. So there's there's no need to touch it yet. And is it enough for you, the improvement? 
I, I think so. I mean, I, I mean, any, I mean, I do believe it is possible to kind of amp it back up and get to where I was. So. Here we are in worship this morning. We love you, Lord, and we do offer you all the praise and all the honor. Here we go. Is a morning like this, I uh, just come to church means uh, it just kind of helps remind me just kind of like what I'm living for and uh, just they just worshiping a guy with uh, you know, other other Christians and other people just helps me uh, remember like what I'm living for, what I'm skating for, which is God and Jesus and and that uh, you know like everything I do there's there's a bigger purpose to it. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? He straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. When I was a child, uh, I, I always enjoyed going to Sunday school. But I think I really picked up on it when I was like um, 11 and 12 years old, just when I was going through my rough time in school. It, it helped you? Yeah, this, this, uh, yeah, this helped me just through, uh, through my difficult time in school. It's because it gave, me, uh, it gave me like a beacon of hope just to know that no matter what I'm going through, you know, there's a purpose for this and it will be okay. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to be. In Jesus' name, the love that you have shown us by your death and Fill us to overflowing that your love would flow through our lives to those around us. If you strongly believe, it doesn't really matter how hard you train because it's not you who decides who wins. Um, I think uh, there's, a, there's like a verse in the Bible that says, uh, you know, you worship God through actions, not through words. So, like, God will help you. God will help you achieve what you want to achieve as long as you are putting in the, as long as you're putting in the work and the action to get to where you want to go. God will never just hand you something. You know, he's going he's gonna to make you work for it. Are you going to, like, ask for anything special for, for the Olympics? How does that work? Um, I never, I, I never like to, to ask God to win. Just because I, I think that's I think that's wrong and uh, I don't think that's the right thing to ask for. I think I always ask God just to help me do my best on any given day. You know whether that's whether that's whether that's I come in first or whether that's I come in last, and just uh, whatever happens to help me help me learn from it and just uh, I guess just to talk about Him as much as I can at the appropriate times. And if you win, will will He be there next to you on the podium? Oh yeah, if I win, He's He's definitely there next to me on the podium. I'm